about six weeks. Uh, and I find out that the church is throwing a surprise shower uh, today <laughs> uh, for me and my wife. And so um, I was there and now I'm here. But uh, it's just been an incredible time uh, in my life right now where I sense that uh, I'm right where God wants me. You know how you can tell when you're right where God wants you? Uh, oftentimes it, it feels like you're not where he wants you. Uh, and, and, and usually that's where he wants you. It's the most uncomfortable place. It, it's the place where nothing makes common sense, but everything makes faith sense. And uh, that means you're smack dab right where God wants you at that moment. Because if you have any sense of what's going to happen next and you know what's next in your life, maybe he's not in it. Because it's a walk of faith, which means that everything God does, you're going to have to totally rely on him all the time just for the very next day. Um, and I'm really excited to share with you about business. I thought I'd start very quickly because I know this is almost at the end of your session. So to keep everybody awake here, um, I want to start with, with five myths. I've been in business uh, since 1987, uh, never worked for anyone else. God employed me for myself and really blessed me. Uh, with a garment. I'm a clothing designer by trade, and um, God promised me when I got out of high school if I would pursue ministry, which I was desperately trying not to pursue, um, he said, if you, if you do what I call you to do, I promise you I will give you the desire of your heart. And my passion was always clothing design e ever since uh, high school. I think uh, probably 70 or 80 percent of my classmates had on a gown I designed or a tuxedo vest and bow tie that I made. Uh, and, and so I always knew that was my destiny, and uh, even though I knew I grew up in a house for ministry. And so I decided not to go to FIT. I turned down the option to go, a scholarship to go, and I stayed at the University of Maryland um, and was angry with God for one year. And then the second year, um, I, I realized he put me there for a reason, and um, I got employed to help me pay for school, um, designing for a Christian uh, boutique for uh, three of my years of college, so I was able to pay for school through that process. And uh, going into ministry, God did what he said he was going to do. Um, just two years ago, my uh, garment manufacturing company went global. Um, and um, to God be the glory, right? <laughs> and talk about influence. He has um, placed us in some really critical places, as many of you can imagine. If you've ever seen anything like Project Runway or any of those kind of shows, people need the Lord. Um, and um, I, I sent in a portfolio two years ago to Project Runway and got a call back, um, and they scheduled me for an interview in New York. I drove to New York, took all of my garments, um, and they turned me down. They told me, you're wonderful, uh, but you don't have enough drama going on in your life. Um, and, and for the first time, I left there knowing I was a winner, okay? I knew it. I knew it. Because uh, if they put me on the show, they wouldn't have a show anymore. Because everybody would get Jesus the same hour, the first episode, and, and then there would there'd be no more drama, right? Because um, I'm determined to be infectious everywhere I go. I, in turn, I intend to impact the environment rather than the environment shaping me or what it is I do. And um, so I'm grateful to God. And um, so I thought I'd start off with just talking about a few myths. How many people are in business? In business. How many are desiring to go into business? How many people wish you had never went into business? Okay. Hey, that's a good question. Uh, um, some folks I know hate in life, and they're doing it because they don't have any other alternative. Um, so I thought about a few myths and to see if you agree with me. Um, one myth that we need to dispel is that um, when you work for yourself, you work less hours. That's not true, right? You work harder. You work more. The day doesn't stop at 5 o'clock when the bell goes off. The day stops when you get tired <laughs> uh, and you ha can't do any more. Um, second one is um, because you're a Christian in business, you're guaranteed success. That's not true either. If it's not what God called you to do, if he didn't call you to it. He's not guaranteed to make you successful at it. Um, and so uh, it becomes a matter of is it his strength I'm on or, or is it my own? Um, and so uh, thirdly, third myth, and I have two more, and that is that uh, Christian businesses never experience a dry season. Well, we just heard that that's not true, right? Uh, uh, everybody goes through all kinds of seasons, regardless uh, of who you are. Um, and in fact, I have found that those dry seasons in business are a time for me to do more planning and planting. 
Um, whenever I hit a season where it seems like, what, what do I need to do now? Nothing's happening. I'm not getting the phone calls like I used to. I'm not getting the, the emails. And immediately I realized that it's been a great time to uh, plan, to go back and start planning. Because when you're busy, you can't plan. Um, and so when you had that downtime, I learned to thank God for those times. And that I realized that doesn't mean my business is not successful. It means that for me to continue to be successful, God wants to speak to me. And he wants to talk to me about my business. He doesn't want me to get full of myself. He wants to talk to me. And when he starts talking to me, it's times like that where I don't have to constantly keep up with my employees and staffing and everything else. And I can just hear God and plan and begin to plant. I found those dry seasons in my business and my life were an opportunity to sow seeds into other people's lives that are in a season where they need seeds sown. And so I found that to be a good time to bless others. Number four, this is not true. All you need is money to start a business. It's not true. I found in these 30 some years, your word is your greatest asset. Your ability to keep your word is your greatest asset. That is your integrity. That is who people are gonna know you for. Uh, and, and I mentor two young men to have phenomenal businesses, but the biggest challenge we have every week is reminding them that do not commit to something you cannot do. Do not tell this person, I'll be there, because you want to try to make all the money you can. It is better to have your integrity at the end of the day than to have a check, but that person never calls you back again. Uh, because they can't trust your word. And the fifth one that uh, I mentioned is that Christians should only support and do business with other Christians. That's not true either. That's not true. In fact, I am a firm believer that in business, God has put you specifically in business to plant you in the midst of the darkest place called the marketplace, where, where you will prove that even on a bad day, you're still having a good day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right. Uh, and I thought immediately about Chick-fil-A and how Chick-fil-A is in the marketplace. But Chick-fil-A has principles and they will not open on a Sunday anywhere. And they're doing extremely well. You know, 